Hey everybody, it's Jesse here from DIYHomeCheck.com, DIYHomeCheck.com. I'm going to go over attic space and roof construction real quick, just for the homeowner's level of understanding. Um, I assume you've already went over the, the video or if you have identified you have a stick-built roof system, not a truss. This is a stick-built roof, which means the entire attic and roof system was built here on site. Uh, your home could be a truss system. If it's a truss system and you see truss with metal gusset plates and real uniform, uh, this video really won't pertain to you. Make sure you go and find that truss built roof system video. But this is going to be for a stick built roof. It's just going to go over a real simple way to just inspect your roof system uh, and your attic system, how it's constructed. In no way is this, you know, a technical on how to build a roof or how to build an attic system. This is simply just to see when you're up in your attic, if you see something you don't think looks right um, for you to identify, uh, is there a deficiency or maybe someone should come look at this or get it fixed or maybe everything's okay. So this is a basic roof, attic structure, stick built. The very first thing, very important to do after you come up in your attic or just peek up in here is just check your rafters. So these long, go all that on the outside walls and up here to the ridge board, all these rafters. Just go one rafter at a time with a flashlight and just literally one rafter at a time, up and down from one side of your attic to the other. And basically what you're looking for is obviously if they're split or broken, that might really pertain if you've had a heavy snowfall or especially if you've had a re-roof because they're really rough on the roof with load and heavy shingles up here. But just check your rafters, make sure none of them are split or broken or really bowing one way or another. Make sure they look fairly uniform and um, just nothing sticks out at you. So this one right here, these rafters look great. I don't see any split or bowing. And when I say split or bowing or cracked, I don't mean just a little hairline crack or a little knot in it that has a little imperfection. I mean, you'll be able to tell if it's split through or there's an actual break in it. So after you go through, you check all your rafters, make sure none are split or bowing or cracked. Go through and find your peak and then just go down your peak. And this peak board up here, this board that goes all along your peak, that's your ridge board. Um, it's not a ridge beam, it's a ridge board. There are some construction styles with the ridge beam. Uh, this is not one of it, this is a ridge board. This board right here at the ridge is actually not carrying any uh, downward weight. Um, it's just providing a way for these rafters to meet and oppose each other on each side. And actually it transfers the weight of this roof system down and actually to your exterior walls. But go through, just check your ridge board, make sure your ridge board's there, it's not broken or any gaps. And then really just check that your rafters on each side where they meet your ridge board is fairly tight. See all these, these look great. See where the rafter meets the ridge board. Um, you know, they're opposing each other, which means they're directly across from each other. They're tight to the ridge board. There's not a big gap there with nails or they're not just all over the place. And then step to the side. Now, if you have newer construction, um, this changed not that long ago, but so here's your rafter and right here's your cut of your rafter. The rafter should fully rest on your ridge board right here. If, you're, if your ridge board's smaller, than your rafter, which meaning the bottom of this rafter would be hanging off your ridge board. Um, that's not necessarily the end of the world by any means. They built like that for a long time, but you know, it's it's if you have a newer home that is wrong, if it's an older home and it's not causing any other defect, I wouldn't get too worried about it. But these rafters should rest completely on the ridge board. So just go through, make sure your rafters are meeting your ridge nicely, and there's not any big gaps um, or just uh, you know nothing broken, and they're opposing each other. So once you have that done. Real easy, go back and start working your way down. In the upper one third of your attic assembly, there should be these cross members right here. All right, these are just simply called collar ties. Collar ties need to be about every four feet. Like I said, um, I'm not getting into real technical data. This is just a way for you to inspect your attic real quick to make sure it's built right or, or safe or you, just to see if there's something bigger you need to call a professional to come out and look at. But um, there's, like I said, there's codes on all this stuff. I'm not going to go over every little detail um, or we'd be up your hours just for some simple framing. I'm just a basic overview. Um, but these horizontal boards are here. It's okay that they're not all lined up perfect. Basically, um, you're just tying this roof to this roof. It's called a collar tie. There's once every four feet. They prevent some, they, they, 
yeah, they prevent some slumping. They prevent it, and also they actually they're more in tune to tying this roof and this roof for wind shear as it pushes on. It's hard to explain on their total purpose, but these collar ties need to be about every four feet. They should be in the upper one third. So, you know, the collar ties shouldn't be way down here. Um, they should be in the upper one third of your rafters and just tie your rafters together about every four feet like they are right here. You'll see some here, some, uh, there's different names for them, but king post and such. Now it's very important, you might see all these king post or struts and you're like, oh wow, they're all crooked or there's something wrong. It's not that they're crooked. They had to come down and land onto a load bearing point. All right, so it's hard to see back there, but if they would have brought this one straight down, it would just land in the middle of the ceiling. So it has to come down and land to a load bearing um, point on a wall. So it doesn't mean they're crooked. Basically, you just go through and observe these. Make sure they're not bowing real bad. If they're bowing, either they dried too much in their bowing or they're under too much pressure. And um, if you can get to them, I don't recommend walking through blown insulation, but any of them you can get to, just grab it and shake it back and forth. Make sure it's not loose. Working your way further down, um, you're going to come to your purlins and your struts. If you have an older home, it might not have these purlin and strut walls. This is uh, to help with... Um, you can actually use a smaller dimensional rafter if you have these in place. It also keeps your rafters all tied together so they don't warp in different directions. If you've ever been driving down the road and you notice um, like a roof and legs roll wavy, most likely they didn't have a purlin and um, strut or purlin props inside the about halfway down. If your home does, that's great. Um, you're basically just gonna make sure it's making solid contact with your rafters and that your purlin um, struts or props um, they may be crooked also they because they may be falling onto a load bearing wall. You're just going to make sure they're all intact. They're not split, splintered. It might not be the prettiest job because like I said, this isn't a factory built truss. Um, this is just um, built here on site, but actually this is fine how these are built. Um, Yep, looks good. Make sure there's not bowed out or kicked out bad. And then if it's exposed, a lot of times this beam right here would not be exposed because it'd be under insulation, but this was a higher ceiling than this one. Um, it's called, there's multiple names for this, but this is called like a strutting prop or a strutting beam. Um, this basically just a way for your um, struts, your purlin prop to, to rest onto if there was not a load bearing point anywhere around here. This is just a big open ceiling under here for a kitchen. There was not a load bearing point, so they had to run um, an extra beam here for this strut or purling prop. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more things with roof construction, obviously, but I'm just going over, if you're a homeowner, you're coming up in your attic and you think something looks wrong, um, you know, you might be able to identify it and get a professional out there to either repair it or, or evaluate it further. But the biggest things are check for cracked, bowed or broken rafters. Make sure you got collar ties about every four feet. Make sure at the ridge that your that your rafters are meeting your ridge board up here um, in a uniform manner. They're not all offset and there's not big gaps. Make sure that your king post and your struts are not splintered or broken and that they um, are landing onto a load bearing wall. If you can get to them, give them a shake, make sure they're not loose. Um, and yeah, that's about it. There's obviously a lot more, but I'm just going over just a quick rundown just to make sure that um, you know, because uh, I'll try to post some pictures of when it is wrong or something's broken. It's pretty obvious, but uh, a lot of people look at a stick built roof. They're up in their attic putting seasonal stuff in here and they're like, I don't know. It kind of kind of just looks thrown together. And um, but actually this roof is um, correct. I know there'll be some um, high speed carpenters around here that's been building house for years. And they'll try to point out 10 things wrong with this. I get it. I'm saying that as far as um, except that, you know, for a homeowner to know if this house is uh, falling down or if this roof's safe or it's built adequately. Um, there's nothing in this that was specifically um, a big red flag that would cause a homeowner to um, call a carpenter out or a framer to start fixing something. All right, if you have any questions, uh, you can always email us at uh, DIYHomeCheck.com. That's DIYHomeCheck.com. Always check our other videos about, um, you know, we'll go over the insulation system of your attic. I mean, you see this light coming in, we'll go over the ventilation systems of your attics. Of course, your heating and cooling systems um, of your home. Um, you know, we have videos for all that. So that way, you know, it's not so you can be some professional trying to, to fix homes. It's basically just to give you as a homeowner a quick reference to know what you're looking at and know if it's right or wrong. And if what you're told being to hold is right or wrong, because sometimes people get told some outlandish things. All right, have a good day. Thank you.